my dad said, it's OK to take risks. He said, sometimes you have to take risks to get to your goals. And he set a good example. A former bomber pilot, he bought a derelict paint factory in Denver in 1958. Then he went to the library to learn how to make paint, while my mom figured out how to set up the office. It was a family affair. From the age of 10, I worked at the paint factory, labeling paint cans, unloading box cars, and testing samples of paint in the lab. By the time I was in high school, I could post invoices, do payroll, figure out the cost of a batch of paint. My parents wanted me to go to college to become the chief chemist at the paint factory. And it would have been easy to fall into the family business. But I was ready for a risk of my own. So I left Denver for college in California and physical therapy school at the University of Washington in Seattle. I was working at Group Health Hospital in Seattle when I first started dating Steve, who was a resident in family practice. He wanted to be a country doctor and heard of a practice for sale in the tiny town of Langley. But he didn't want to buy the practice unless I would go with him and help him run it. So to check out the opportunity, we took the Cullshan Ferry to Whidbey Island, <laughs> met with Bob Barkley, the People's Bank loan officer. Our after hours meeting was set at the Doghouse Tavern. <laughs> We're over a pitcher of beer and a game of pool he loaned us the money to buy the Langley Clinic. Wow, after five months of dating, I find myself <laughs> agreeing to help run a medical practice in a town I haven't even heard of before. <laughs> I left my apartment, my job, my friends to leap into the unknown. I did feel some fear at this point. It's hard to imagine how different medical practice was back then. <laughs> there were no ambulances. There were no doctors staffing the emergency room. There were no cell phones. We'd be telephone operators tracked us down if they couldn't find us at the clinic or at home. If you had chest pain, you had to drive yourself to our clinic. Sometimes I went with Steve on house calls late at night. I participated in the whole spectrum, from helping with home births to participating in quiet, dignified home deaths. We were a team. We loved being here. It was the most intense, challenging, most meaningful work of my life. Once our medical practice was on its feet, I decided to focus on my own profession. I opened the first physical therapy office on South Whidbey in 1982. The only difficulty was our daughters were aged two and a half years old and two weeks old. So patients sometimes had to hold baby Katie or read a book to Joey while I did their ultrasound treatment. Still, the practice thrived and grew to two offices. For years, Steve and I joked that what Whidbey Island really needed was a health facility so people wouldn't end up at our clinics. We saw community fitness as a natural extension of our medical careers, but our parents thought it was a terrible idea. They were worried we would lose everything we had worked so hard to achieve. Even my dad felt it was too big a risk. There were barriers and naysayers, but giving up was not an option. Shoulders to the wheel, we re reworked the business plan for another five years, getting rejections from 13 banks until finally we obtained financing to build Island Athletic Club in 1995. And we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary later this year. <laughs> now that I look back on the arc of my career, I see the fingerprints of Whidbey Island all over it. This is where I was mentored by many accomplished women who encouraged me to have both personal and professional goals. This is where I saw strong and fearless women in all segments of the community and learned from them, from things like hanging sheetrock and using a chainsaw to community activism. My future would have been guaranteed had I stayed with the family business <laughs> in Denver.
My path would have been safer had I stayed with my friends and career in Seattle. But then I wouldn't have moved to Whidbey Island. I wouldn't have had experiences with birth and death at the clinic, opened my own practice, or built a health club. Instead, I found the encouragement of this amazing community to open three businesses. As you get older, your mission becomes finding a way to pass on what you have learned in a way that's useful to your community. I'm active with a group called Whidbey Island Local Lending that helps connect fearless young and old entrepreneurs with investors. So far, in the three years that Whidbey Island Local Lending has been around, our group of people has collectively loaned over $800,000 to businesses on South Whidbey to make our community better. So I want to close just with a bit of advice for those contemplating opening a business. Go ahead, believe in yourself. For that voice inside of you that wants to be heard, let it shout. For all you really need are three things, commitment, preparation, and the fearlessness to take a running leap at your dreams.